Code carters are great for practicing your skills. But by necessity though, these are usually small problems and your production code is on a completely different scale. Today, I wanna to show you a kind of code carter that's a little bit larger. It's a back-end service with a database written in Node.js. It's a little bit closer to a real-world system than your average code carter. And I'm gonna show you a good way to get this code under control using approval testing. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer, technical coach, and proponent of approval testing. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before and you like what you see, please subscribe too. The goal of all my videos is to help you learn something that you can use in your job as a software developer or a technical coach. Today's demo is designed to be slightly closer to a real world system than some of the other code carters that I've showed you. I'm gonna show approval testing of the RESTful Booker service. This was written by Mark Winteringham and he created it to teach testers about API testing. It's a backend service for a hotel booking website. It's got Node.js and a REST API and a MongoDB in the backend. I'm gonna show how I'd use the approval testing tool TextTest to get this code under control. First, let me show you what the system looks like. I've opened up the RESTful Booker project in my IDE, and I think the best thing to do is just to start it to show you how it looks like when it's running. So I'll just use npm start. It sets it up and says it's listening on port 3001. So my service is now running, and if I open up a browser, I should be able to go to that um, URL. So this is the welcome page. It says, welcome to RESTful Booker. So this is just a static page. Um, the actual interesting part that we're gonna look at now is the API Swagger documentation. So this is configured in the, the code that this should list all of the endpoints that are available in this service. And if you can, if I just scroll a bit, you can see there are several endpoints. Um, it's a REST API and uh, they do various things around bookings. Restful Booker, it's about booking hotel. So uh, let's just try this out a bit. If I look at this simplest endpoint, the ping endpoint, this is just a health check um, to just confirm that the API is up and running. And that's what the documentation says. But interestingly, it's very useful with this swagger thing because it's got this try it out button. And if I press on the try it out, it turns from just being documentation about what the endpoint is to I can actually execute it and see what happens when I call it. So it did that now and it's shown me the curl command that it would have sent and then the response. So I've got a 201 created and some response headers. So it seems like, yes, the service is up and running and the health check is working. So that was what the documentation said should happen at this point. So that's good. Now, that's not a very interesting endpoint. So let's have a look at one of the more interesting ones. This one, create booking. And this one is actually going to uh, modify the contents of the database, create a new booking. Um, so let's try this one out as well. And this one, of course, needs some test data. I have to send it a booking. So I'm just going to edit this, uh, this text here so I can've got some JSON that's a little bit more meaningful. I'm going to book myself in. Uh, I'm going to book this hotel over Christmas. That sounds like a nice idea. Um, and uh, so this is slightly more realistic test data than it just comes up with by itself. I'm going to have breakfast as well. So when I press the execute button, it sends that request to the API um, and it shows me here the curl that it's generated and then the response that I got from the server. So I've got a 200. I've got another bit of JSON back, the response body and some headers. And looking more closely at the response body here, it tells me um, what I sent it, you know, the booking, but also I've got a booking ID and that's the ID that I've got in the database, I think, for this booking. So it shows me it's successfully round tripped um, from the, uh, the interface to, to the database and back again. So if that has worked, that's a good sign for my, my service. So this is all manual testing so far, just using Swagger. But what I'd like to show you now is how to automate uh, those two manual tests using text test. I'm going to shut down the server that's running and show you what I've got here for text test. Now, 
I've already uh, done some work configuring uh, this tool. I've got quite a few files here under the integration tests folder. Now, this one here is a Python script. It's the test rig. So I'm just folding up the code here so you can see I've got like three small methods and then a main function. And um, all in all, there's about 70 lines of code here. And this main function here is the one that's doing um, all the work to start the RESTful Booker service running under the control of text test and allows me to interact with it and record and replay tests. It also manages the, the MongoDB and the contents of that. So I don't know if you can see right at the end of the script there, um, it's going to dump the contents of the database. Um, so uh, let me just show you what it starts out with in the database, because the test needs to control both these, you know, what's in the DB at the start, and then it will show you what's in the DB at the end, so you can check it's done the right thing. So this is a JSON file that specifies the three records that I'm going to have in the database to start with. Um, and since this is a Mongo database, JSON is a very natural way to describe your data, but actually you could use um, text test with a, a relational database as well. Same kind of principle. Um, so I'm not going to show you all the configuration files, but um, this one I thought was interesting. It's just a little batch script for starting up text test. And text test itself is a, a Python uh, tool, um, but you know it's, it's a convenient script just to start it here with the right configuration. So I go to the integration test folder and run my batch file and then it pops up a window. And this window here is the text test GUI. Now in a previous video about the Gilded Rose, I showed you you can run text test without the GUI and it can still run tests. But when I'm doing what I'm going to do now, which is create tests, it's actually very useful to have this user interface to help you. Now, it's already set up with some configuration, as I mentioned before. Here on the left, I've now clicked on the root of the test suite. And at the moment, there are no tests. So this is just the root of the test suite. And on the right, you can kind of see some configuration files, which are then going to apply to all of the tests in this suite. Um, so I'm about to create a couple of tests, and they're going to all share this same configuration. All this code is on GitHub. So if you want to go and actually look at these files, you can, you can go and look at them. I thought that the details of the config maybe weren't so interesting for this demo. Um, but I will point out the, uh, the booking JSON file. That's the MongoDB uh, initial contents that I showed you just now. Um, and that's uh, shared for all the tests in this test suite. OK, so we need to add a new test case. And let's write one for the ping health check endpoint to start with. That was a very simple endpoint. So here I'm going to try and create the test by recording interactions with the API. So I'm just clicking on the run button and here it's popped up a new window for text test. It says it's running and what it's doing now is it's actually starting up my service. It's running npm start basically in the background and it's moment is going to pop up. Yeah, there it is. It started my application. So now it's popped up the Swagger API docs. So it's the same thing as I did in the manual test. I'm going to go to the documentation for the ping endpoint, press try it out, press execute. And then I don't know if you can see in the background there now, text test, that window that popped up has just kind of changed state. It's noticed that I interacted with the API and that the recording part is done. So, so now I can actually, um, I mean, I can look here and see if Swagger says that everything worked and it, and it does. But actually, the more interesting thing is what did text test record for this test? So here it's um, showing me that it's got some new files. I don't need the Swagger um, GUI anymore, so I can just close that. This is the interesting part. Now, this is an approval test. So, of course, it fails the first time because it doesn't have anything to compare against. And that's why it says new files. It's all red. There's, there's a problem. You need to do something. Um, so here I need to actually inspect what it's gathered for output and see if it's what, something I want to approve. So um, each of these files shows a little preview on, in the lower right pane here. So it says new results in standard error and there's nothing. So that's good. No errors on standard error. Uh, standard out, it just says starting RESTful Booker on this URL and stopping RESTful Booker. So this is just what my test rig has written about what it's doing to control 
my application. So the, the interesting part, actually, the, the real uh, meat of the test is this file. If I double click, it opens it in an editor. So this text is, um, it might not make much sense. Let me go through it. Uh, so this is um, a kind of format that has evolved. It's kind of unique to text test and it's a format for describing interactions. And the little arrow that's pointing um, to the left away from the file, that's the, the input that I'm sending to the application. So this first line has got that arrow saying I'm, I'm sending the application a GET request on the ping URL. And then the next line says, and there were some headers. Um, and then uh, if I just point out this next line has got the arrow going the other way because that's input that's come from the system I'm testing. And it says, yeah, we got a 201 created with these headers. Uh, so that's what I observed. Actually, Swaggart was telling me as well. Um, so that looks correct. It looks like that's what I wanted my ping to do. So I'm just going to approve that. And now I've got a test for the ping endpoint. And if I switch it to replay mo mode, then it will replay those interactions and check that it when I pass in the, the things with the arrow, you know, the get from the ping endpoint, that what it gets back matches the text in the HTTP mocks. Uh, and it did. So it says, yeah, it succeeded. I, I got back what you expected. I got back the 201 created. Let's add one for that other endpoint that we looked at, create booking. Uh, because this one is actually um, modifying the contents of the database. So uh, here I can see I've just created the new test and it's uh, showing me the data files it's inherited, the, the, the database contents at the beginning of the test, uh, but there are no approved files or definition files yet for this test case. So we need to record what the interactions should be. So again, I run it in record mode and it uh, says it's running, it's starting up my, my whole service. And when it's ready, it pops up the browser and I can then go and use this to interact with my application. So let's go to the post create booking and let's try it out and write in that interesting test data that I, I was came up with before. So, um, like I said, it's, it's kind of just slightly more realistic than um, the, the string or whatever it was. It was going to auto-generate for me. Yeah, I fancy the idea of a nice hotel over Christmas, maybe, with breakfast. So let's uh, send that over. So when I click Execute, uh, my API is going to do something, and the, the service is going to write that to the database, hopefully. And yep, yeah, that's the response I've got back from Swagger. I've got a 200, and uh, now I've got a booking ID. So let's close this browser and have a look at what text test made of that. So this time, again, it's failed. You know, I've got new files. It didn't know what to expect. I've got four files this time, though. Um, so... Some of these are the same as before. We've got the uh, standard error and standard outputs and the HTTP mocks. So let's just have a look at the HTTP mocks. So this is a little bit more complicated than for the ping test because we've uh, posted some JSON. And that's the first thing here. You can see the, the JSON that I sent in and the headers. And then um, as well as that, I've got the response that came back. So that's this line here with the, um, the server has responded with 200 and this bit of JSON and those headers. So if I just look at that, that JSON that came back, that's the same as what Swagger showed me before. The booking ID is the important thing. It shows it's gone to the database and got an ID. So this looks, this looks good. Um, so what else do we get though? This file here is, we didn't get one of these before because there was no modification in the database. This is the new records in the database. And you can see that this is the one that just got created. This is me staying over Christmas and the booking ID 4. Um, and this is uh, just, it just shows the changes in the database. If it had modified any of the existing records, that would have come up here as well. Um, or if it had deleted something or, you know. So basically, text test um, is gathering the changes in the database because it knows what was in there from the start. And it can see that this one's new and it's showing me that. So for this test case, um, this looks correct. And um, stand there and standard output, I'm not too worried about. But 
I can see here that if um, I send in this HTTP request and that the HTTP response comes back looking like that and the database is updated like that, then this would be correct. So I'm approving that. So now I've got two test cases um, and running them is quite straightforward. I can actually just select the root of the test suite and then it will run both the tests for me um, in replay mode. And I don't know if you can see this, it might go a little bit quickly, but it's running them both at the same time. Uh, it's running them in parallel. By default, it will run as many in parallel as you have CPUs on your machine. So uh, that speeds it up a little bit because each one is actually starting up your whole application. Yeah, so it ran both my tests in parallel and reported them both as succeeding. And yeah, now I've got tests for those two endpoints. And as you can see, it probably wouldn't be too much more work to add tests for the remaining endpoints. I hope that this demo has given you something a little bit closer to the real world that you might be working with. And you'll have gained some insights that'll help you when you're trying to write tests for a similar backend service. Do check out the tool text test. Happy coding. <laughs>